Have you struggled with making realistic looking maps in city skylines? Maybe you're curious about experimenting with the map editor, but don't know where to start. The mountains and rivers can be the toughest part to get just right. But did you know that there's an easy way to make a great looking map that can be done whether you're modded or vanilla? In this video, I'm gonna show you a cool way to import real world height data into the game and give some tips on how to make it look good once you're in the editor. If you're new to the channel, my name's Diana. Let's get started. I'm using this website, which will give you the perfect size to import height data from anywhere in the world into a map that'll fit to scale in city skylines. The area I've chosen is in the Southern Sierra Nevada foothills in California. I like that it had some mountains and a lake nearby, but with lots of flat buildable area and a few rivers for visual interest. There's three options to download the map. Raw height data, PNG, and zip folder. They all work, and I downloaded them all, but the raw data or PNG should be enough on its own. You will need to import them into the game files, so this will only work on PC. I'll go ahead and post the usual file path in the description, which is where the game files most often live, but your file path may be slightly different. If you don't have a folder called Hype Maps in the Map Editor folder, it's okay to create one. You will need to drag all the files you've downloaded in the height map folder so the game will recognize them. I drag them all in and check the zip folder just to see if there's anything I missed. The info.txt file will give you the actual data numbers if you're interested, but they're not necessary for it to work. Once you're in the map editor, there's a little button you can click at the bottom called Import Height Map, which will show you the contents of the height map folder. Just pick your desired file and click Import and the terrain will automatically be adjusted to match the real world data. There won't be any water at first, so it's important to study your desired location to see where the water levels are and use many water sources. If you think you've used enough, go back and add twice as many and be sure to adjust the height of the water to match. The height data may include some oddities like this straight line, which in real life is a dam. So be sure to check everything for weirdness and adjust it as needed using the terraforming tools at your disposal. For my map, since it's an inland map and there is no ocean, it was important that I adjust the sea level to zero, which means the only water on the map comes from the water sources I hand place. Otherwise, it'll flood the entire bottom of the map with water, and I didn't want that. Making good rivers can be one of the toughest parts of making any map. Because the water flows downhill, at some points you may have slight variations that you can't see that'll stop the water from flowing, or maybe there won't be enough water to cover the full length of the river. This map did include some very tiny terrain lines to match where the rivers are in real life, so I followed those where I could and did the rest freehand. I used my terrain brushes at very light setting, carefully leveling out the river's path and placing water sources at low strength along the way until each river was full. These water sources can be added at every point where the river runs dry to help it stay full. Placing trees can be a daunting task as well. While I am using the forest brush mod with some trees that I handpicked, you can use the vanilla tree tools as well. I found that strategically placing trees along the greener areas of the hills where there are less cliffs, especially in between the little passes, looks quite nice. And then blanketing the lower elevations with more trees as well as lining the river with them to make it look lush and green. While not necessary, I did place the dam off camera, but I think it's backwards. This map is still a work in progress. You can also add little detail rocks in select places. I used a combination of vanilla and workshop assets for this, but the vanilla rocks look great too. I'll go ahead and link the vanilla version of this map on my channel as soon as I'm finished with it. If you're interested in more tutorials I've done, start here where I show you how to build a simple trumpet interchange. And don't forget to subscribe for more great videos. Until next time, my name's Diana, and I'll talk to you later.